everybody, this is Mel from Mel Booker Music and Blues Power and Get Blues Power if you're here on Facebook. So um, today is episode 9, we're coming up on episode 10 here pretty soon. We're waiting for Jonathan, he's uh, got a college class, so he's also in college, he's a Marine, he does everything. So we're waiting for him, when, we, when he comes in we'll start jamming and doing more stuff. I've just been in here warming up and dialing in all my electronics here, making sure my signal is good. Um, once again, um, the description, uh, the link in the description is going to have the download links for the backing tracks if you guys want to play over this after we're done talking about what we're going to talk about today. And if not, you can always go to spreezy, S-P-R-E-E-S-Y dot com slash blues power. And then you can download any, I've got other backing tracks and lessons and books and things on there. You can download those and look at those um, also for your guitar viewing pleasure. Um, the... Um, uh, the thing that you want to remember is is if you if you don't have access to backing tracks or, or if you you know get them off YouTube or whatever, try to get with some friends and play this stuff as much as possible. Playing guitar by yourself and working out the licks sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't. Most often, what ends up happening is when you start to play those and, and try to get in the pocket with a band, uh, that's when the rubber meets the road, and a lot of times you have some problems with, with that. And I know a lot of times when I was younger, I played with some older guys that, that were really good. And you end up getting your butt handed to you a couple of times. And then you have to go back to the drawing board, if you will, and go work on that stuff. So I always recommend playing with the group or playing with the backing track, even more so than a metronome. Now, a lot of music teachers are, are really strict on, you know, metronome, 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 metronome. Everything's metronome. What I did when I was practicing, I used a metronome to work on my speed possible. Uh, once again, uh, I had a little glitch there in the video. Um, I, I use the metronome to work on speed, but not so much to work on my pocket. I, for me, coming from a funk background and, and all the great drummers that are in those bands, uh, for me it was important to actually learn how to follow that and make my right hand play in the pocket with that drummer. And for me, playing with a click wouldn't do that. So, you know, when I came up you know, I was listening to the Brothers Johnson, uh, Prince, and all the Minneapolis guys. So, so Prince and the, and the Time, even Andre Simone, I know his drums were more electronic, but I, I listened to that stuff. Of course, James Brown, everybody listens to James Brown. Um, Roger Troutman and Prince were probably my big influences for that. And uh, some of those drums are electronic, some of them aren't. But still, if you get used to working your right hand, Rondell, what's up, man? Thank you. Uh, if you get used to working your right hand, whether you're playing blues, funk, whatever, you get used to doing that with a with a drummer, then you don't get in a band situation where people are looking at you like, you know, uh, that's not what you want. You know, oh, I practice to a click all the time. Well, if you practice to a click all the time, that doesn't mean you're gonna have a pocket. It means you're gonna be able to play to a click. So what I always did was. Haha, <laughs> it went good, man, went good. I did a jazz show last night, and um, I'm starting to get all these jazz gigs, and truth be told, I hadn't been playing just regular jazz for a long time, and uh, someone told me, you know, hey, jazz is a party, it's, you know, part of who you are, and I was look, thinking about that, and it just so happens that all this stuff came up. So, yeah, it's going good. Thank you, man. Um, the, um, lost my train of thought. Oh, anyway, pocket. If you're working on pocket, um, and this show is a lot about playing blues, but I think after we finish up this series, I think my next series is going to do blues, but we're going to do funk stuff. Uh, this is what I say, and I'm going to have teachers probably commenting on this and, and, and harassing me about this, but I do not play with a metronome for my timing. I do not do it. I play with Roger Troutman, and I play with Prince, and all my heroes for my timing. Because whoever's drumming in that band, or if it's a machine, they're on. And that way, when I get in a, in a band context where I'm having to play with somebody, they're not looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm not in the pocket. Um, and some of you guys might get this, some, some of y'all won't. But, but um, just, to, just to stress it, if you are only playing with a metronome and you're not working on your pocket, um, you're going to have some problems when you get in a band, especially if you're playing funk stuff. Uh, let me let me let me take these blues chords and I'll and I'll tell you what I got going. Um, okay, 
So for me, especially um, a lot of funk is 16th notes. And you get people, when you do a funk series, I'll change this. You get people playing funk and they'll do this. Uh, let's see, let me. Okay, so they go. Okay, so that's not wrong. Okay, that's still. Uh, but when I was coming up, that's not what I heard when I listened to Prince and, and James Brown and Roger Troutman. Um, those 16th notes should be swung. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have straight 16th notes. And that goes back to playing from your heart and playing with feeling and not just doing the mechanics. You can say, oh, I'm playing funk. Listen, 16th notes. Okay? So for me, that's not... That's not funk and that's not playing in the pocket but like I said if you only play with a metronome there could be a possibility that you end up playing stiff because you're playing to click 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 okay so for me I always swung my 16th notes and I think about that um, when I'm playing whatever blues and stuff too there's certain times you can play stuff straight but certain times you're going to be playing them swung when they're swung you need a long one and you need a short one okay so here's straight Okay, so now for, for blues people, what, what does that mean playing blues? Uh, to me, it's the same thing. Uh, and I hope y'all get this because like I said most people when you start talking about a metronome in the music community people go crazy sometimes so just hear me out I'm not saying don't use a metronome because I posted this a while back on my YouTube channel people had a fit um, I'm not saying do not use a metronome that's not what I said I said I use a metronome to really work on my speed to increase my speed when I'm having trouble with stuff. I'll start the metronome at a slow click and I'll work on whatever it is, and then I'll go another click and I'll work on it. I'll go another click and I'll work on it. I'll go another click and I'll work on it. Um, if I'm trying to work on pocket stuff, man, I'm getting James Brown, Prince, Roger Troutman, whoever, and that's what I'm gonna do. I will not do that with a metronome. I do not do that with a metronome. And I think that started a long time ago uh, when I was a kid. So, um, so just to make sure, one more time, so y'all not sending me messages, get mad that I'm bad mouthing the metronome. I'm not bad mouthing the metronome. I'm just saying for 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 certain music styles, you've got to get away from that metronome and work on your pocket. And when you're working on pocket stuff, usually you're a little bit ahead of the beat, maybe a little bit after the beat. You know, if you're playing swung eighth notes, one's long and one's short. You're not falling right on mathematical equivalents. So, um, and that makes you stiff. So if you play that way, you're gonna end up being stiff. And so I, you know, I started playing a lot of Prince stuff, a lot of Roger Troutman. I, I listen to Roger Troutman a lot from Zap, um, and that's how I worked on getting my pocket. And, I, and for me, that helped out a lot. So now bringing that over to blues. What does all that have to do with playing blues? It's the same thing. Sometimes you can't think mechanically about everything you do. We talked about this last week. Um, you don't want to think mechanically about every single thing that you play. Sometimes you've got to just start playing. Um, sometimes you've got to just let that music out, even bad notes and all, especially if you're not on the, on the bandstand playing, you're not on stage playing, then you should be pushing yourself to let whatever music is in you come out, not so much worried about the mechanics. You do need some mechanics, you do need some facility on your instrument, but the result is to make music, not to make scales or to make, you know, whatever rhythm it is, okay? So, when, and, and that's why I'm reiterating all this again, because last week we talked about that. I want to make sure everybody gets it. You know, the goal here isn't, you know, play this scale, play that scale, you know, uh, play this um, arpeggio, whatever. The goal is to make some music out of all that. And so when I'm playing here, and I guess I'm getting old, so y'all, you know, can see my age or how I'm talking, but, you know, when, once you get to a certain point, you know, the mechanics aren't as important as 
the emotion that the music makes you feel or en enables you to let out. So, um, so what I do, I put this on and I play again, and you'll hear me. I'll do some different rhythms and play some different things in here while we wait for Jonathan. Like I said, he's got a college class, so um, he'll be uh, he'll be coming in shortly. But what I'm trying to do, play just from the heart, not so much the mechanics and stuff, and let you know all the emotional content of what you're playing come out. Not so much the mechanical side of it. So, um, so let me put this track on. Let's try it. If my electronics will work out right. on Instagram and Mel Booker Music online on Facebook uh, and that's more for the school out here in SoCal. Um, this is Jonathan, my student. Uh, he's studious, he's coming from college rushing over here so we can jam, so I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, once again, uh, if you guys missed it earlier, the webpage for all the downloads and books and stuff is Spreezy, S-P-R-E-E-S-Y, Spreezy.com slash blues power and once again you guys uh, tell all your guitar friends about the, the show and have them tune in because we're going to do this every single week we'll, talk, we'll, we'll tackle different things I'm probably going to start another show if you guys have some suggestions I think what I'm going to do is have guests on the other show and talk more about gear and stuff um, not that gear is the be all and end all but, but you know, I mean you got to have gear to play so I think that would be a good one to tackle so anyway um, uh we're going to put the track back on. I'm going to play chords, and I'm going to have him just warm up and play, and then we'll start talking about a new subject. I hope you guys got the thing about what I talked about earlier, and I'll reiterate it to him here in a second, but uh, I want him to warm up. So here we go. B flat.
Yeah, is there a difference? Uh, if you guys saw the show last week, um, he was playing, but he was thinking that I was just telling y'all about that before. You know, sometimes it's not about the mechanics and stuff. You just got to go. Um, and he was thinking about what he was playing. Don't mess up, don't mess up. And then you heard it, you know, he's all over the place, right? So I said, sometimes, you know, maybe just close your eyes. Don't, don't uh, look at your hands and, and focus on what you're doing, but focus on kind of what you're feeling. Try to play that way. So he, he messages me, hey, I blindfolded myself and I'm playing blindfolded. And I said, yeah. So, um, you know, whatever you got to do to do it, cool. Um, by him blindfolding himself, that might sound sound odd to you guys, but let me explain why. Amanda, hey Amanda, thank you. <clears throat> um, the, the reason why he went home and blindfolded himself is because sometimes, especially in... in the blues idiom that we're doing, um, and I don't know if everybody does this, but I know guitar players do because I do it too. Um, you tend to want to look at the, the neck and you want to look at the patterns and you want to look at the scales and, and, and you want to do all that. And I think sometimes the more you focus on all that, the less you actually focus on letting the music out and it ends up being a hindrance. So he messages me, hey, I tried it, I, I did, I put a blindfold on. And then last night he was at the gig and I asked him, so when I asked you how to go, how to work? It went good. Yeah, because sometimes the thinking part of it actually gets in the way of you, you actually having some kind of emotional connection to the music. And that's what we want. Um, you use, I think, the mechanics to have some facility and do certain things, but I, I don't think music is about the mechanics. I think it's about how these songs make you feel. When somebody has a favorite song on, they don't say, I like that song because of the major scale that it's built on. I mean, nobody says that. Um, that's not what it is, but you like that song because it makes you feel a certain way or it makes you remember a certain thing that makes you feel a certain way. And that's what music's about. It's not about all the, you know, what's this scale and what's that scale and all that. Um, and too many times we make it that, you know, myself included. You know, I have a book out called Scale Theory, if you guys haven't seen it. And I, I was younger when I wrote it, and I still think that um, it's pertinent because it gives you the tools to make the music. But, but the music is not the tools, per se, okay? Like, if you're building a house, <clears throat> the hammer is not the house. No. It's the two, tool. Right. The two by fours are not the house. The concrete is not the house. The end result of that is the house. All those okay. components coming exactly. together. Exactly. All those components coming together is the house. That's what I want y'all to get. So if anybody, and I'm sure at some point I'll get some haters and somebody will be mad, I'll backtrack real quick. Uh, while, while he was gone, I mentioned to you guys about the metronome. So I'll mention it to you here. You know, my big thing now where I'm at, at this stage of my life and this stage of my music career, you know, it's about the music and making the music happen. So I mentioned to the audience about um, the metronome, because a lot of people, everything with, with music teachers always metronome, metronome, metronome. What I do is I try to have that metronome be for me when I need to work on a passage that's faster. Yeah. I start it slow and practice it correctly. Mm -hmm. Then you go to one tick and practice it the next speed correctly, and that's how you build your speed up. Okay. I don't use a metronome to really work on timing mm -hmm. because I think you have to have a good pocket, and that means you've got to be able to follow a drummer. Mm -hmm. If you play the metronome all the time, and this has been my experience, so maybe you guys have a different experience, and that's fine, but my experience is that you can play with the metronome all you want to. If you get on stage and you cannot follow that drummer, you're probably going to get cut. That's just it. And if you're a drummer and you have no pocket, because a drummer, you're the guy that has to hold it all down, and I've seen this happen before. If you're the drummer and you cannot hold it down, you're going to get cut. As simple as that, because everything is based off of you and the bass player especially me coming from a, a funk back background. So if you don't want to get cut, work on that pocket. Okay, remember what I'm saying, work on that pocket. Because if you spend all your time, I kid you not, if you spend all your time working on just a metronome, uh, you're going to have good timing, but you may or may not have a good pocket. You know, it just depends. So if you get a chance to play with a good drummer and practice following him, you guys that are younger, uh, or if you're in a funk band, I mean, that'll force you to do it, you know? Even if you don't, you guys that are metal guys and watching this and, and you like blue stuff, play funk stuff anyway, even if you hate it, just so you can work on having a good pocket. Because um, that's missing, to me, that's missing from a lot of rock bands. You can hear the rock bands 
that have some some pocket and some some kind of bump to them because it shows. And usually those guys have some kind of blues background. Almost almost without exception, they have blues somewhere in their in their in their background. So anyway, I've been talking a lot, so let's do it again. Um, I'm going to have him play again. I'm going to play chords, and then uh, the same thing. I'm, I'm with him. We've gone over some scales and stuff in the first episodes way back when we started, and now I'm having him practice use and all that stuff, and not so much thinking about the scales, but actually the usage of them and, and getting music out with that. So, here we go. see what the rhythms are, you know. So, you know, quarter notes. It's a quarter note over that. Yeah, so, quarter notes. That's on top of that shuffle. Okay? Now, um, you can easily play notes and then create some breaks in there too. You notice a lot of times I'll I'll, I'll do runs and then I'll stop, um, and and that's more natural to blues players. But I, I think with me I came back to that backwards because I mentioned to you guys last week. I think it was last week. Um, sometimes when you're coming from a rock background, I'm playing a lot of rock stuff, and early on I, I had really wanted to play a lot of rock stuff and play. The faster licks. I was here in California, and everybody in the that was doing rock stuff was doing like um, Racer X stuff and Ingve Malmsteen and, and more of the faster type, you know, guitar playing. And I was trying to do that too. But I think what happens is um, when you start listening to other instruments, 
you start to hear things like I mentioned last week, the saxophone players. Saxophone players will take a breath, so they structure their phrases in such a way that those breaths happen and kind of create those rests in what they're playing. So you're not always hearing a flurry of, of, of long notes. With guitar, you're not really forced to take a breath, so you could just keep putting notes in everything and fill up all the spaces with notes. But um, most horn players don't do that. Um, the horn players that I like, they don't do that. So what will happen is you'll play something and you've got to think of where that rest is going to go, where that silence is going to go, where you're going to let it breathe a little bit or let that note do something so you're not always filling up spaces with tons of notes. And I'm as guilty as the next person with playing a lot of notes because I mix some of that shred stuff with the, with the blues. And now that's kind of my style. I'm not really a shred player. I wish I could play like Paul Gilbert, but I can't. Paul Gilbert, if you ever see that, see this uh, video, I wish that I could do that, but I can't do it. So that's that. And he's got all fingers too, so I can't do it. But, you know, coming from, from you know, playing funk and, and bluesy type things, um, it's usually not about how many notes you can play. So what I ended up doing was borrowing some things from that, borrowing some things from blues, you know, you know, lots of funk chops and pocket things and putting that all together. So when you're when you're playing these rhythms like like a quarter note Sometimes that is just well, as effective that's as what if I had needed. Gone, that's exactly you know that. Okay. I just need to calm down. <laughs> yeah, because you you know what I you learn this if you if you watch the masters that play blues even with Stevie Ray Vaughan. I mentioned this on another show already too. You know, as as bad as that dude is and, and Buddy Guy and all of those players, man. There's times, man, where they just hit one note and that, you know, what are we doing this show? Ooh. <laughs> you know, if y'all remember anything else from this show, you got to remember this. Ooh. <laughs> that's, you know, that that's what you try to make happen. So, um, uh, David Boyd, uh, Let's Dance. If you listen to the fills in the beginning part of that song before the solo comes up, that's Stevie Ray Vaughan. A lot of times he's hitting just one note, you know, just, just one note. Um, and that's what it does. That one note just, just it's perfect. It's nice tone. He's hitting it, and um, it. That's a lot of work to be able to play less and to make it do more. That's harder, I think, than, than playing a lot of notes. Sometimes you get away with stuff when you play a lot of notes. Um, when you're playing slow, um, you don't really get that um, at all. So. So you notice how you know we're putting the rest in there, and a lot of that stuff works. You let that note say what it's going to say, and then before you start talking again, you kind of let it hang there a little bit. Marinate. You know, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that, that makes marinate. sense. Yeah. Oh, that's a good word. That's a good word we're going to start using on the show. Marinate. Let the note. You know what? Let me, let me barbecue. I'm in Texas. If y'all don't know that, I'm in Texas. Uh, let me barbecue real quick. So watch. Play some chords, so let's let's try it.
So yeah, that's a good idea. You know, we'll coin that phrase here. Marinate. Y'all heard it here first. Marinate. Okay, so sometimes that that's as effective as playing a bunch of notes and filling up all the space. And like I said, I'm guilty of that too. Sometimes you just feel it and it just comes out. What can you do? But, um, you know, there's times where you can let your notes marinate like that. They hit home. And you've seen this before too. Sometimes I'll play something and I'm feeling it. So I'll repeat those. And I'm pretty sure you heard me do this live before. No. I'll repeat those couple of notes over and over again because something just... I can't explain it. It just happens. <laughs> you know, it just, yeah, it just, it just, it just happens. It just you know? used to be. But then I'm feeling it, yeah. and so is the audience mm -hmm. feeling it exactly. at that point. And then you know. Um, <clears throat> so when you're playing live, there's times where, it, you know, it doesn't take a million notes. You know, sometimes <clears throat> just these couple of notes and a phrase, and it works. And you and feel that. Man. That's all you need. Yeah, you feel that. And that's it right there. So sometimes I'll go through, man, the chords are playing, whatever, and I'll just keep hitting those same couple of notes. And then the crowd's clapping and everybody's screaming and stuff, but it's just a couple of notes. So it doesn't mean that I'm brilliant, but those two notes were what was needed, and somehow I played the right thing right there, and people connected with, with that, yeah. you know? So just remember, y'all don't have to play a million notes and sit there with metronome all the time. And you know, that kind of stuff, okay? Sometimes it just takes a couple of good ones that you feel, and then it just, man, it works. It works. So you don't always have to be running to the races, you know? Sometimes you got to marinate it. We barbecue it. You can't barbecue quick. <laughs> Takes time. Yeah, you cannot barbecue quick. John, hey John, thank you, man. John, you're always supporting the music scene up here in the AV. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, so yeah, uh, new phrases: marinate and barbecue. <laughs> we don't teach y'all nothing else on this show. <laughs> we teach you how to cook. <laughs> we gonna cook. We gonna cook. All right, how are you doing? One thirteen. Okay, so let me reiterate again for the new people. Ha <laughs> ha, Rondell's laughing. Uh, yeah, we gonna barbecue. I'm from Texas, Rondell. I forgot where you're from, man. I'm from Texas. Um, so, once again, this is Mel from Mel Booker Music. Um, on Instagram, it's Mel Booker Music and Get Blues Power. On, um, on Facebook, it's Mel Booker Music Online. And my personal page, I just usually shoot stuff over there, so y'all need to follow that. But um, <clears throat> Get Blues Power on the Facebook page. And then Instagram, uh, not Instagram, uh, Twitter. I really, I shoot stuff to Twitter. I don't really use Twitter, but I'll just forward stuff from my Instagram pages. So you guys can follow that. Follow that. Um, then Spreezy.com, S part, S P, I can't even talk. Let's see, talking about barbecue. Um, <laughs> Spreezy, S P R E E S Y, Spreezy.com slash Blues Power. And that's all the. Um, the downloads and books and all that stuff. It takes me a lot longer to get this stuff out because I'm teaching and uh, my kids are still young so I'm always running during the day. Uh, but I'm in the process of transcribing the other eight episodes we did because I want to eventually package all that up with licks and all that stuff. And like I said, uh, in the future shows we're going to tackle some other stuff. I think the next show I want to tackle blues but I want to tackle funk and continue this thing talking about pocket and working on, on your, your right hand. I think it's important, I'm going to reiterate again since he was uh, at school this first part. Um, the mo to me, the most important thing in music is your ear and playing from your heart. Even if you don't know that many things about skills, Rondell says, New Jersey, we still cook notes out here. <laughs> he said, well, I'll do. All right, Jersey, Jersey cooking too. All right, all right. So, um... Um, I, I, I want to make sure that, that you guys get this because, you know, I, I still consider myself a funk player, but I bring in blues and jazz stuff to what I do. And then since I spent a lot of time studying the shredders, I never really got to be a shredder. I incorporate some of those things into what I do. I'm by no means an expert, but I think where I'm at now in, in my music stage, like I told you guys before, um, I want to spread music and the love of music wherever I go, and I think that's the game plan, is that you want to feel what you do. And at some point, the mechanics and the scales 
and the this scale and that scale and all that, at, at a certain point that gets let go of and it's about what those things convey. It's not, you know, about that. And most of my heroes, you can't even ask them about scales and stuff because they don't know. It just comes out, you know. So that tells me that, number one, they have a good pocket, they have a really good ear, and they're playing from their heart. And they're letting whatever is inside come out. And another thing I'll mention, I should do this on a show too. I've been watching a lot of documentaries. I know I'm talking to y'all, but i got to get this out. Um, I've been watching a lot of documentaries, and a lot of these uh, people that play blues, the blues was birthed, you know, out of black America and all the hardships that have happened. And then it spawned off from there, and you know, we have all these other styles from it. But if you want to understand about playing from your heart and, and, and putting emotion in, in what you're playing, go watch some of these documentaries. You'll learn some stuff. If you watch The Life of Riley, B.B. King documentary, you're going to learn some stuff about him, and then you go, oh, okay, I got it now. That's where that music came from and why he plays the way he does and why there's so much feeling why he can hit one note that everybody knows his beauty. Yeah. You know? Um, Hendrix, even Hendrix, people don't realize this, Hendrix has a blues man story too. Uh, I won't give away the DVD, y'all need to go watch um, Hear My Train to Coming. You know, it talks about his, his mom and him bouncing around the cousins' houses and stuff and getting hurt in the military, all that stuff. Um, uh, Janis Joplin, for you guys that like Janis Joplin, I watched that and now I've seen it like four times. Same thing with her. Usually, usually what happens is that music comes from some place inside you, whether it's happy or sad or whatever, there's some kind of emotional connection to the music. If not, you know. And I'm sure my age again, but, but you know, the state of music right now. Usually people are getting behind a computer and they're trying to make something that'll appeal to as many people as, as possible so they can make a lot of money and get out. They're not really trying to create art and playing something that, that means something to them. Not everybody in pop, pop music, I'm just saying some of it. And y'all know, we don't have to have no big argument, y'all don't need to send me hate messages. I ain't gonna mention no name, but you know. I mean, you know, you can hear it. They just, behind a computer, somebody's writing some songs that, that will be a hit so they can make some money and they're they out. Um, but music wasn't always like that. You know, another good documentary is to watch Standing in the Shadows of Motown. Everybody knows the Motown artists, but people don't really know the, the band be, behind them that made all those hits. And it talks about their story and, and, and their struggles and stuff. It talks about Jamerson and his struggles and, and some of the sessions he ended up doing. He was such a master, that bass player was such a master. He, he pulled out, well, you got to watch it. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. You, you got to go watch it. Um, what else? Stacks, I think it's Respect Yourself, that's a stack story. Um, Muscle Shows, that's another one. Um, so just go and start watching those documentaries and you'll get inspired because you see where a lot of this music came from and the struggles, especially the 50s and 60s in the United States was really hard times, but at least in these studios, it was white musicians, black musicians, and it was no drama. They were in there creating and some of the greatest music that still stands to this day came out of those times. So, you know, do yourself a favor, go back and watch those documentaries. Um, I've seen most of these ones I mentioned to y'all, some of them I own because I went and bought them, but um, most of these I've seen five, six times already because I keep watching them. Each time I get something else out of it and it makes a connection to, okay, that's what happened and this is why they play that yeah. way. It's not about the scales, and it's not about this arpeggio and all that stuff. So anyway, I talked a lot. We're coming up on 11.20, and I'm talking. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It, it is good to understand. Yeah. Back yeah, 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 yeah. And I guess, you know, when you get old, you start talking a lot. I used to talk about old people <laughs> talking all the time. <laughs>
Uh, I just thought of something. Uh, I'm going to teach you this. I'm going to teach y'all this, too, because you play a lick, you remind me of a B.B. King lick. Uh, I'm going to show y'all, and uh, I am by no means good at playing B.B. Um, I wish I was, but I'm not. But there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a thing you can use to get that sound, and I'll, I'll show y'all what it is. Let me slide up real close, and then I'll show him, but I, I want y'all to see this. Um, to play what we call a B.B. King box, if you're playing pentatonic scale like we always play, there's a box if you go up a whole step from here. That's more our king. Don, what's up, Don? Thank you, man. Um, this is more uh, our king. Here's Steve Ray Vaughan, do that thing. Uh, Second string, yeah. That's the, the turnaround lick. You hear Steve Ray Vaughan do that a lot. Uh, now we're gonna take that box though and move that box up a whole step. Now, okay. Bingo. That's that's oh. my shortcut to BB because I can't play like BB. I wish I could. That was could, cool. But I, I wasn't been that's, a, that's, a, that's my shortcut. Okay. If you hear me play a lick that sounds like BB, I'll be playing these five notes. Pop, pop. That's it. That's my BB right there, man. And I have DVDs in the whole nine, and I can't can't get it. So this is my BB. You see, I changed my vibrato too. If I'm playing BB lick, I'm going faster vibrato than my normal one. You guys know it's kind of wider and more rounder. But if I'm playing BB, I'm going to go. Bingo. That little thing right there gets you in BB turf. So let me show you again. We're, we're doing B flat uh, blues. Sorry, you're going to hear the, my single calls humming, but that's okay. I like hum. All right, so. So. Okay, pentatonic. Then I'm going up to this next position, this five note box, which is our Albert King box. Relative major. Now we're going, yeah. So now we're going a whole step with that same five note box to here. And mix it up however you want to, but that's BB, and that's, that's as much BB as I got, so. So, so there, there's a quick uh, thing. I, I, I just heard he played a lick that was close to that. I thought anyway. I could be wrong. But um, I'm running over my cable here. I like that. So that's that's how you get that sound. So let's try it. We got about five minutes left, so I gotta hurry up. I've been talking a lot this show again. Um. So we put this on. I'm gonna play it, then I'm gonna have him do it. But I'm gonna roll up here so y'all can see. I keep rolling over my table. Oops. Change to a toe down. That's more BB.
videos about that BBD box. That's why you making faces. I've never seen him make face, make a face in here ever. Not once. We didn't mean the king. He gonna make faces. So I was just gonna say one thing about that because it's only five notes. You can't sit there and go. Bruh, 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 bruh. You don't get to do that, right? You don't get to do that. You 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 have to slow down and you have to make those notes do something. That's the first time I've seen you do that. Um, so the, that little box, it's five notes. And I usually don't even do more than that. BB can, I cannot. So that's my BB thing. But you notice how immediately I don't know what it is, but that little box. Man, it just, those notes sound really good, you know? Um, so that's a little thing that you guys can remember if you want to go into BB King territory and have more Majory sounding uh, licks, is to take that, that second box from your pentatonic scale and just move that a whole step higher and then do those notes and try to do more bending. Don't try to run through it. Try to just- Take your time. Yeah, take your time and marinate. I almost Maybe. forgot. Yeah. We barbecue <laughs> so you cannot rush through that. You don't rush barbecue, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so. Okay, wow. so that's a good one. To, that's a good one to end up. We got two minutes, so let me, let me wrap it up real quick. Um, once again, Mel from Mel Worker Music, this is my student Jonathan, Marine Corps. Marines. Oh, I forgot. Appreciate, appreciate it, appreciate it. <laughs> I'm not a political person at all. I, I hate both parties, Woo. but I got, I got respect for you, man. I got respect for you, man. Um, so that's as much politics you're going to hear in this show. Um, uh, once again, Mel from Mel Worker Music. Jonathan, my student, we're, we're, we're bringing our blues power. Thank you for watching. Please share this with, with your, your guitar playing friends. We're going to pass this around as much as possible because the idea is to spread music, to spread the love of music in whatever way possible. Social media is perfect for that. So um, once again, later on, I'll put the link to the downloads for the backing tracks here so you can uh, download those and work with them. Uh, on your own and if you have any questions be sure to message me or leave them right here make sure you show your friends this show it'll be saved on Facebook um, so you can come back and watch it and go back over things if there's anything you missed and uh, once again Mel from Mel Booker Music on Instagram it's Mel Booker Music and Get Blues Power here it's Get Blues Power on Facebook thank you guys so much and I appreciate it um, ah, John said that's some tasty barbecue. Yes, we're cooking. <laughs> we're coined in here. We're marinating and barbecuing. Loose fire. Thank you guys. We're out. See you next week. <laughs>